Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Good to have you with us. New York Republican Congressman Chris Collins was arrested by the FBI on Wednesday, along with his son Cameron and Stephen Zarsky, who's the father of Cameron Collins' fiance, charged with insider trading along with securities fraud, wire fraud, and other crimes. Collins has also become an important force in Washington, D.C. politics. He was the first congressman to endorse Trump, and he's now become one of the president's closest confidants. So joining us from Bloomington, Minnesota, is Bill Black. Bill is the Associate Professor of Economics and Law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white-collar criminologist, former financial regulator, author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One, and, of course, a regular contributor here at Real News. And, Bill, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Let's take a very quick lesson in insider trading. What just happened here with Collins? So uh, Collins was on the board of directors of a New Zealand company that operated largely out of Australia that uh, was supposed to be developing a drug that would work uh, against a particular form of multiple sclerosis for which there is no uh, good drug at this time. So if the drug worked, uh, it would, uh, the stock would become very, very valuable. Uh, but the uh, drug absolutely failed uh, its trials, uh, which meant that since the company's only asset was this uh, drug, um, it not only wasn't worth a fortune, uh, the company is essentially bankrupt. Mm. Now, what Collins did apparently, if I have this right, and he'll explain how this works and what the legal issues are here, that he got wind of this at a congressional picnic and then called his son, uh, by phone to tell him that started the process where his family would save a lot of money, even though he couldn't save as much because of Australian law. Could you explain some of that? What exactly, what are the laws he exactly broke and how did that play out? Sure. So the uh, insider trading uh, is, uh, comes out of securities law. And it says that if you have uh, information not available to the public uh, that you got through a position of trust, like uh, board of directors, uh, you're not allowed to profit from it, nor are you allowed to tip other folks so that they can take advantage of it. And of course, you can take advantage of good news by buying uh, stock before the good news becomes public, but you can take advantage of bad news by selling existing stock uh, that you already have. And this, of course, was a latter case. So uh, the situation was that uh, the drug company uh, told uh, its board of directors before it told the public that the drug test had failed. And it was, of course, immediately obvious to the board of directors, including Representative Collins, uh, that this was going to be a disaster financially. In fact, the shares lost over 90% of their value wow. uh, in a day. Uh, so that they knew that they had to get out if they were going to avoid any substantial loss. So how, how tight and secure is this indictment, do you think? I mean, about the, just the case, you've been in these before. I mean, what are the chances Collins get convicted? What are the issues that are going to be, uh, uh, that will arise? I mean, uh, how tight is this? Well, uh, this is the type of thing that uh, people have been following now because uh, in addition to the uh, conspiracy uh, to uh, leak the inside information, uh, he is also alleged to have lied to the FBI uh, during their investigation. And you can, of course, we're, uh, the media is going uh, nuts discussing whether Trump would ever sit down uh, with Mueller. Uh, and this is why he will never sit down with Mueller. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, be, because uh, lying to the FBI, you don't have to be under oath. Uh, you simply lie to the FBI. That itself is a federal uh, felony uh, with, uh, you know, I believe it's five years. Um, Just for lying to the sentence. FBI. Just for lying to the FBI uh, when they're operating in their official capacity, where your intent uh, is to lie. So you have to prove that the person uh, knew uh, that they were lying. But in this case, <laughs> uh, there's a very strong case uh, about that. So to clarify, the congressman did not sell his own shares. Now, that isn't out of the goodness of his heart. 
uh, that's because it was close to impossible for him to do so um, because his shares were actually in Australia and a trading order had been issued. Plus, hmm. uh, it turns out uh, the congressman was already under investigation before he did this. He was under investigation by uh, the House ethics folks. And he was under investigation because the testimony is that uh, when he was in a, a general meeting with the FDA, which of course has to approve new drugs like this to make them uh, commercially valuable, he brought up that there was this new effort uh, to develop a drug to be helpful uh, against multiple sclerosis. Didn't tell people that he owned, uh, was on the board of directors and owned a huge stock position and had bragged publicly that he had made a ton of members of Congress millionaires by getting them into this stock. And he also not only got him his fellow congressmen into the stock, but he also got his son into the stock. His son got his uh, <laughs> fiance into the stock. The fiance had the son got uh, the fiance's dad into the stock. <laughs> the dad got his sister and his brother <laughs> and one of his good buddies from years ago into the stock. So all of these folks had been recruited into this a stock with the idea that it was going to make a fortune. And then it released a slug of good publicity designed, we call this pump and dump, to pump up the price. Uh, stock price did rise uh, a lot and such. And then some of the insiders in Australia allegedly dumped some of their shares early, but not necessarily these folks. They were just had all this paper wealth and then uh, the drug trials uh, blow up on them. So, um, the, as you said, the congressman actually, just to make this story perfect, <laughs> learns in a, a text on his cell phone, uh, as, a, as his, in his capacity as a member of the board of directors, while he is at the White House <laughs> for the congressional picnic that the drug trials has failed. And being a good, responsible congressman, he immediately sets out <laughs> to try to commit a felony. <laughs> so he calls <laughs> seven times what? within like a minute and a half, his son to warn him to that this uh, failure has occurred so he can sell his shares on the basis of insider information. That's what we call a conspiracy. That... <laughs> a so, conspiracy so... is a separate felony to commit violations of these federal securities laws so... and such. And his son doesn't say, oh, no, that would be immoral and illegal. He says, thanks, yep, Dad. But go do this. But his son has a version of sort of morality. And so he goes and, you know, after all, I, it makes sense. You know, I had a father-in-law. <laughs> you want to keep on good relations. <laughs> so first he tells his fiance, because that's important. After all, he got her into the stock. Then he tells the fiance's father, because after all, they got him into the stock and he might be a little pissed at the potential son-in-law in all of this, right? Um, and he, here's the, the moral part. The congressman's son tells his fiance and the fiance's dad, I'll let you trade first on the insider information because I own so much of the stock that if I sell it, it might depress the price. So, it, so, it, so you can have the most <laughs> valuable tip. Right? So, so he's really got the, you know, getting the end with his future father-in-law, except he's just brought him into a criminal conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> and exposed him to years decades potentially <laughs> of time in prison <laughs> and he's actually done that to his fiance as well but he's lucky that the feds just make her an unindicted co-conspirator now 
his future father-in-law is also moral <laughs> in this really twisted way. So he's got, as I said, his brother, his sister, his sister's husband, <laughs> and this longtime friend into this stock that turns out to be worthless. So what's a moral person going to do? Warn them. <laughs> <laughs> using this insider information, which of course is also bringing them into the conspiracy and exposing them to criminal punishment. But the, these folks are not indicted. But it gets better because these morons <laughs> are texting. They're sexy? Like they're texting later. Texting. Others said they were sexy. They're texting. Got they, it. They Sorry. Using insider <laughs> information, right? And it turns out that the future father-in-law's sister and her husband, despite being tipped, don't sell their shares. And so there's text messages quoted in the indictment saying, why in God's name didn't they get out? We told them in time. We got out. I don't get it. And they say, and they actually use the words, how strange it is. Now, remember the context. They're saying how strange it is that my sister didn't commit a felony. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, well, they, I... and, they, and they speculate, humans are weird, right? <laughs> Some people are honest. Go figure. <laughs> so but it turns out, according to the indictment, the sister <clears throat> and her husband were not actually moral themselves. They, when they went to the broker, the broker refused to do the deal because he suspected it was a crime. That's apparently. interesting. So, now, so let me ask this question. So, I'm sorry, I just got to add one thing. Guess who else was involved in all of this? Tom Price, who at the time was a, a sec, you know, a cabinet appointee of the president. How was he involved? He also owned stock, and so he was under investigation by the same House Ethics Committee. And guess what? He refused to cooperate with the House Ethics Committee while he was a member of Trump's cabinet. <laughs> so, so one thing I would say here, Bill Black, uh, I think it's important to say that if there was an award for... Um, the best storytelling economist in the world, you'd have to win it. No, I don't <laughs> write this stuff. <laughs> so, this, uh, so this, this is Trump. Uh, this is the world of Trump, where sleaze finds sleaze. So, the, the, before we take a quick break here, the, the 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 question I have: What about the congressman who invested in this company beyond Collins and the people that he got to move in? Um, is there any implication there? Do we know who they are? What does that mean, if anything? Uh, we don't know uh, what uh, a bunch of them are because, of course, uh, house ethics are such a sieve. Um, but um, they probably lost a ton of money. And so the knives may be out <laughs> in Republican ultra-conservative circles. Because as you said, Collins only claimed to fame. He hasn't been a longtime congressman. He's not a powerful congressman. Um, he has a, a, a BS in mechanical engineering and an MBA, you know, where you go to learn ethics. In business. Right, you're right. Oh, yeah, supposedly, allegedly, which, yeah. Which is why I call business schools fraud factories. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, he, his only claim to fame, really, and it was being the first to endorse Trump. And for that, right. at the Republican convention, they let him be the first person to publicly come on stage and second the nomination of uh, Donald Trump. So it really is only that closeness and a district that has been carved out of all these uh, rural areas in upstate New York to make it a very, very, very safe Republican seat, such that even after this indictment came out, the political expert types who rate these things moved it from the category of basically sure Republican win to 
very likely Republican win. You know? So we we like our felons and we're going to reelect them. <laughs> I mean, one of the things is that just because he's under indictment doesn't mean that he won't be reelected. It happened on Staten oh, Island no. before. No, it no. can happen again here. No, no. The, the betting line is that he will. And I haven't finished on the ethics because <laughs> on top of telling the FDA, hey, you should hear about this wonderful new drug and not telling them that he actually had a major position in it. He did eventually tell them when he requested a private meeting with the FDA officials and asked them to help the company because it was in its drug trials. Now you can't do that. But, but the question is, where, Even does, this, in the house, that's but where does this kind of hubris come from? I mean, how does it, how do you sit in Congress and just think you can do these things and get away with because it? Because you can do these things. Because it happens and all the time. Get away with it. <laughs> right. And it isn't just Republicans. Menendez. No, right, 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 <laughs> right. And he was also, Collins had pointed out, he's, he was a confidant of Trump. He sits next to him at all the meetings. Um, they've become good buddies since the endorsement. Um, what that means in terms of indictment may be nothing, but it's all so convoluted and twisted. Yeah, and pres- it's quite possible, of course, that Trump will do his Manafort version and say, what, Congressman? <laughs> <laughs> I think I Who? shook hands with him once. <laughs> Well, I I deeply appreciate your shedding light on all this for us uh, and the way only you can do it, Bill Black, uh, to make us laugh and cry all at the same moment and understand. Uh, no easy Irish trick. It's the approach to life. So Bill, have a, have a wonderful journey, and it's good to have you with us once again. Thank you so much for your insightful wisdom. Thank you. Take care. And thank you all, folks, for watching and being part of this. Look forward to your thoughts and everything you hear with us here on The Real News. I'm Mark Stein of The Real News Network. Take care. We'll be talking soon.